from a family uh, with uh, six from the first father and from my own father's side three or together nine and my mother's influence on all of them including my other sisters they are all very musically inclined my interest in music began with the influence of my mother I remember when I was a boy she sang a lot even in the 1941, when the Japanese were bombing Singapore, we all ran to the basement of Cathay building to avoid the bombing, but actually they came down from Johor instead. But anyhow, the many days we were in Cathay, um, we were, she was singing, and then that's how I followed and sang with her. My mother is a true Pranakan, uh, they came from Malacca. I think, I think you know Malacca is a very stronghold of the Pranakan family. So she imbued a kind of... Malay culture is very strong. So the Pranakan speaks Malay. So most of the songs that I learned are Malay songs. For instance, uh, our area, we were staying after that at Tanjung Katong. So the Tanjung Katong is a after now, I'm still teaching some of my students in Gelang, Sipaku Gelang, also Gelang area. So all this environmental uh, music plays a very important part in our early childhood. You talk about heritage, I come from Pranakan music, so the national music and the Malay music played a very important part in my life in relation to Chinese music. Although I studied Chinese in schools, there's more for passing the Cambridge paper <laughs> than for music, you know. I spent a lot of time practicing on my piano because I started learning piano at the age of seven and eight. And of course, singing also influenced because uh, I joined the primary school choir and later on the secondary school and the teacher's training college choir. When I was young, I had a very good core of teachers and uh, leading musicians. People like uh, Benjamin Koo, Paul Abishnan Garden, Josh Koo, Lola Bell Wong, they were my sifu, my leaders and teachers in piano and singing. The rudiments of music and your theory of music and your technical aspects and singing all comes to play, but I enjoy mostly the repertoire they handed down to me. They were also very influential in their own church music. And in church, when you perform, you really have to sing to the audience and you have to convey your message to audience. And that is part of singing. Uh, you have to convey whatever you want to bring to the audience. The music lessons were held in weekly, like a half an hour per session. At that time, it was only $15, but uh, in relation to the present values, it's 10 times more, so it's about $150 now. Beginning, as a boy, I was interested in music, and I was interested in conveying my, what I know to my friends, because a lot of my friends staying along the Telokorao area would come and gather around my house, and we would do a lot of group singing. So there developed my interest for teaching others in singing. So I chose teaching as my career. In other words, darling, love me. After I graduated from the teacher's training college, I was attached to the Ministry of Education Music Department. And then the head of the music department was also my teacher, Mr. Benjamin Koo. And from that teaching experience, I gained a lot because I was sent to five big second school, major second schools like Victoria, Mount Sale, Bartley and all that, Raffles Institution. So my values from each of the second school helped me to develop my character and also my love for music. The organization for music and dance 
was under extracurricular activities. That is the centre I was attached to. And I was made the organising secretary. As organising secretary, you must know a lot. You have to do a lot of planning for... First of all, we had what we call central judging. So about 100 over schools who send their choirs, that's primary schools and secondary schools. We also had band competitions. So that a lot of administration and a lot of work to do. In 1973, the SIAP Games, that is the Southeast Asian Peninsula Games, was held in Singapore. And I was made to organize the Combined Schools Choir as well as the Combined Band Mass, mass Display. And they will go to either Victoria Theatre or the, at that time we also had the National Theatre to compete in these competitions. And uh, finally, since from the selections, from the results of these competitions, we will collect them and organize into a central band or mass choir for the SEAP games. A good band, of course, must play uh, the music correctly and in tune, and there must be showmanship. Because uh, in school bands display, showmanship is very important. During my time at the ECA Centre, in Extracurricular Activity Centre, we have several school choirs, and then after that, we selected the good singer to form the Combined Schools Choir. Then we formed the Singapore Youth Choir. As early as 1969, Singapore Youth Choir. And this youth choir training is very intensive because they attend two practices a week, Wednesday and Saturday, about six hours, three hours each practice. And apart from that, if your singing ability is not so good and you haven't learned your parts well, you still have to come for detention for another day. So the training is very intensive in the Singapore Youth Choir in comparison to the school choirs. First of all, your voice quality. The second thing, the criteria for selection should be whether your voice will blend into the voices of the whole choir. As I told the choir many times, if I put 50 or 60 of you behind a curtain and they will say there are only four singers behind the curtain, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, all of you should sound one voice. And in that way, the blending will be very good. So when you go for competition, the blending of the voices is very important. And when the Singapore Youth Choir went to UK, I suffered. I think the people marvel where comes this little tiny country can produce such a good choir with one voice, a blending of voices. The Singapore Youth Choir, uh, in existence since 1969, and it has always been my wish and I will say my prayer that the choir can be a national choir but up to now it's, it's not made a national choir because for some reason they thought that singing is not important yet um, whereas the SSO will feature weekly programs as part of Singapore's uh, cultural program for the people and for the visitors, whereas the choral singing has never come up to a very high level of esteem from our people yet. When they pulled me out from Ministry of Education, uh, the SSO was only about three months old and I was surprised that I was chosen. but. Uh, I believe in, in God to help me in my work because uh, it's a very teething problem in the early days financially as well as to get musicians. Um, Singapore has, can't supply all the musicians that the symphony orchestra needs so we had to recruit a lot of foreign musicians. SSO in the early days is quite different from the SSO of the present time. Simply, it's the repertoire. 
In the early days, SSO will play classical pieces from Bach, Mozart, and uh, but now we have more contemporary compositions. So the people get the opportunity to listen to contemporary musicians, which is quite a difference to the early classical composers. Every three, four years, there are bound to be four or five musicians who will be retiring. So we have to replace these older musicians with the young musicians. So the system of sending young musicians abroad to study uh, and improve on their string instruments playing or their wind is very important so that we can feed them into the SSO membership. Mr. Lim has a lot of energy. He brings so much to what he does. He has always very creative ideas on how to bring more music to more people. He's very, very resourceful. And the choir still keeps this uh, very pioneering spirit of his. He animates any of the groups that he conducts. Every time he walks into the room, you actually expect something to happen. And then something does. So he has this very positive energy. I think it's very hard to put it down on paper or on tape when actually it needs to be experienced. <laughs> I think David Lim really deserved the cultural medallion. I think he did uh, so much for the music scene, more than perhaps any one of his generation. What he did was always for the community. I think that's very important and not just for a certain class of people and it wasn't just for the concert goers and so on and so forth but I think he brought music to the community and to the masses. Till today um, the Young Musician Society which he rescued from the Ministry of Education still shares this that we believe that music is for everyone and not just for those who know about it already or who are practicing it already. For the two groups, that means the orchestra and the choir, to, to grow the audience, they have the same kind of uh, objectives. That means their repertoire will have to attract the audience. Whatever they are performing or whatever they are singing, the audience would like to, to come and listen. If your repertoire is just above the head of our audience, then you will not get enough people to support the concert. The various groups like YMS and uh, SSO and uh, Metro Philharmonic, they have done a good work for the few decades that they have been in existence. Uh, we need more support, not only from the people, also from the government. For the musical goods to flourish, the support of the people is very important. I think they are getting it now because uh, Singapore Symphony Orchestra, at one time the attendance was only 50%, but I was told now they got about 80 to 90% attendance. The government will have to continue giving funding to all these groups like the Singapore Symphony Orchestra, the Lyric Theatre, because on the collection of uh, the emission tickets itself, the groups can never survive. I would say from my experience, if you sell the tickets, too high a price, you will not get the audience, so the collection suffers. So it should be somewhere affordable. At this stage, that means the 21st century, our country's achievement of music development, I would say, is better than 20, 30 years ago. Although I'm not directly in touch, but I read the papers and follow the concerts, but I would say, there's still much more to do. Singapore will have to develop the kind of more for the love of, of music in the people and in relation to UK or London like that. Because, uh, of course, Singapore is a bit difficult because our cultural diversity and different racial upbringing is different from UK. They all develop into one European music. But Singapore still can do a lot of work.
I would think that uh, through the television programs, in, in, instead of just having 80% uh, of entertainment programs, I would like to see 40 to 50% of music education programs so that our people can understand music better and also wanting to perform music themselves. Singapore has not reached that stage yet.
few verses to sing. What a, uh, make me a blessing, followed by Jesus is my Savior, and what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. In view of the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> make me a blessing.
change one song. Uh, that's where I go and worship every Sunday. They will say, He leader me.